I'm joined by the star of the show, Ruth Murray. How lovely to talk to you. Well, I'm not the star of the show because there are five of us on that bench, remember? So uh, I have some wonderful actresses with me on that stage. And we all get a, a good old go, a bite at the cherry, you know. It's fabulous. It's a really nice piece to do this. Are you enjoying it? You seem to be. Yes, I am. And it's very rare, of course, that you get a brand new play that's uh, tailor-made for women of um, <clears throat> over 50, shall we say. <laughs> you're over 50, I wouldn't I say. They're above 20. Oh, you're a flatterer. <laughs> Your mother brought you up well. <laughs> now, of course, I've got to talk to you. We'll, we'll get it out of the way, Heidi High. You had such a distinctive character. We all remember you. And it's being re-shown now, I think, on a Sunday and every day on UK Gold. It kind of lives with you as much as Ferran Neighbours lives with her, really. Absolutely. Uh, the nice thing about Heidi High, of course, because it was done 22 years ago. And uh, we've now got a whole new generation. So, in fact, two generations have grown up with Heidi High. <laughs> it's a pity, really, that we only did about 70 episodes. But, of course, um, I don't think it's very good to look back. And I'm glad that the BBC and the Wisdom have not wanted to rehash it because we were all younger. It was that year era, the 80s. It was a colourful piece. Heidi High, when you look at it, smacks of colour to me with the yellow coats and the bunting around the Olympic size swimming pool and all that <laughs> business, you know. So I, I think that was of its era and that's why it's now considered, of course, a period piece, you know. Were you allowed to make the character into what you wanted it to be? Because it seems as though you did it very, very naturally, if nothing else. Well, it was written for me. Glad was written for me. Um, and I'd known Jimmy Perry since I was about 19 and I was 40 when I started started Heidi High so I'd known him an awful long time and um, we discussed it and he said you know she's a vamp from the valleys and all that business but she's uh, you know a virgin underneath it all <laughs> and if somebody actually you know tried it on well I think she would have run a mile god love her you know underneath all the false eyelashes and everything but uh, the actual image of her I asked Jimmy Perry if I could base her on a wonderful woman of the 1950s called Zizi Jamer. She was um, a very beautiful French ballerina and she had she was the first one to do that gamine hairstyle and of course Audrey Hepburn took it up and various other people took it up. So I actually based the look on this dancer and they were in full agreement of it but you never deviated from the script. Um, getting back to this play, this is very good writing. So therefore you don't need to make any of your lines up. And we weren't, well, certainly in Heidi High, we were never allowed to deviate from script, script. Had to be dead letter perfect. Sometimes they actually got the idiom of the Welsh wrong and they would insist that I did it their way. And I'd say, no, it won't get a laugh that way. And then when it didn't, and they'd say, and I'd look at them, you know, and they go, all right, Ruth, we can see to you, you know. Uh, but that only happened, I think, twice in the whole of the 70 episodes, you know. Was it a hard show to do? I mean, was it quite strictly timed and things? So there was no room for an extra day shoot? Absolutely. There was no, no room whatsoever. And we never took up the... Um, the actual Lee Day, which was the Saturday. We always worked from Monday to Friday when we're on location. But of course, that was only part and parcel of the piece because we then went back into the studio and we did it in front of an audience. So you actually had a screen there with the inserts of the filming, which we'd done previously. And, uh, and then it was all done in front of about 300 people. Hence, you didn't get canned laughter in it which is smashing yeah. so it lived the show lived and you did it from the top of the script to the bottom of the script and we got so adapt at it but if you actually had to do a second tape, we didn't like it. It was sort of, you know, quite infradic to do it, you know. We go, oh, one take Maddox, one take Jamie, one take Pollard and all that. And, you know, we'd slap each other on the back and all this. It was great, great fun and great days. But of course, oh, everybody has to move on. Susie has moved on. Paul's in Hobie City, you know, and we, we have to move on in our own various ways. But it was a great time, a lovely nine years to look back on. We're talking to Ruth Maddock today here on Rupal in the Afternoon on BBC Radio Leicester and you've had an amazing theatre career particularly in the West End you appeared in such musicals as 42nd Street tell us about some of the shows you've been in I had the privilege of closing the open air at Scarborough many years ago with my rendition of West Side Story when I was 
doing Soprano. Uh, and I, of course, I played Maria in that. And my son, who is 36 now, w- was in a caricot at the back of the stage. <laughs> And there would be, uh, that was open air, of course, that one. It sounded a little bit like a Greek tragedy. Teodoro, Anton, you know. Um, but the musicals I've done have been splendid. Now, at the age of 60, I feel that, you know, it, it is about time that um, I hung up, you know, my old tap shoes, really. Um, and there aren't many parts in musicals for women of 60, let's face it. Um, so the, my last one was two years ago with 42nd Street playing Dorothy Brock. But of course, if they do bring it over from America, you know who's going to audition, don't you, for Dorothy? <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> There's a role in the Full Monty for the older lady, shall we say, that you might enjoy? That's right, but I couldn't I couldn't even audition for that because I was doing, you know, Fire Blue Head. And I mean, you get to see naked men every day, so I mean, there would be certain... Uh... Very interesting, yes. <laughs> but I think I've seen it all at my age, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what have you enjoyed most then out of them all, and then I'll let you Go. What's been the best thing about your career so far? Oh, lordy, lordy. There have been so many highlights, things that I never expected. But one of the, the greatest things that I will always remember is playing opposite Sir Harry Seacombe in Pickwick, which I did, did for four years. Pickwick was special. Pickwick was written for Sir Harry. And there he was at 75, God love him, singing that top C in If I Ruled the World. And it was just a joy every night. And I do have to say, I've met some marvellous people in my business. Don't listen to all what the papers say, you know, because there really are fabulous people here. But I suppose the one that stands out must be Sir Harry, because he, I think he was blessed. That's the only way I can put it. He had everything, that common touch and the great voice and the great acting ability and, of course, his comedy as well. He had everything. Yes. To me, he was a blessed man and he thoroughly appreciated that. He and his wife, Lady Myra, were just a joy to be with. They really, really were. And I'm so pleased that I did Pickwick with him. Ruth, it's lovely talking to you today. It's five blue-haired ladies sitting on a green park bench. And you actually do sit on a green park bench, don't you? We certainly do, yes. (laughs) It's been a great pleasure. Thank you.